I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a simulator drive. The gang's all here. In this video, we're gonna go over what we're using, how easy it was to set it up, being able to play with your friends, and then we've also got a special section where Steve from Super GT on YouTube is gonna show us how to be faster. Check out his channel. It's a good way to see what Gran Turismo Sport for PlayStation was all about. And then we've also got Mr. MCA to do a lap guide for the one track that we race the most with our subscribers every night. And then start to brake just before the grass on the left turns into gravel. Brake hard for a moment, then ease off on the brakes to let the car turn in while you're still slowing down. So make sure you guys follow us on Instagram, at the Stray Pipes, at Yuri Tereshin. That's where we post room codes pretty much every night. And if you're actually playing GT Sport already, Mr. MCA does lap guides for every single daily race all the time. So check out his channel and definitely subscribe to that, as well as Super GT, who's coming up soon. All right, so we're here with Steve from Super GT. He is going to show us how to get faster. So the reason we're playing Gran Turismo Sport is because we already had PS4s and pretty much all of our friends were already playing it. Shout out to all the guys. Here's a a bunch of the cool straight pipes liveries they've been using to beat us and also lose against us a whole bunch. You guys really put some serious effort into your liveries, so let us know in the comments which one you guys think is the best. And the reason we're not playing fours is because we just don't have Xbox, but it is cool because it does have a yellow prowler and an orange raptor. Yeah, so Microsoft and Xbox, if you want us to play that, give us a call. And we're also not playing Assetto Corsa because it doesn't seem to have as easy of a multiplayer as GT Sport. And then I just installed iRacing Apparently it's way more realistic, way more competitive, but I haven't really gotten into it yet. And iRacing is only for PC, so it's definitely a lot more hardcore than the setup we're used to for GT Sport on PS4. So before we get into what gear we're using, we should probably mention we are not sponsored by PlayStation or GT Sport, but it's just what we've been playing. Not yet. <laughs> okay, so the setups we started off on. The first thing I got was a Thrustmaster T150 steering wheel and pedals because it was the cheapest force feedback steering wheel I could find. But the pedals that came with it are pretty basic. They don't have that much feel. I started with the exact same setup and I'm still using it. So let us know in the comments which pedal and steering wheel we should go with next. And I also started on the PlaySeat Challenge, just like Yuri. I found that because I was looking for something that folds up and will fit in like a closet because I live in an apartment and I don't have that much room for a full seat. Then, lucky for us, PlaySeat managed to hook us up with the PlaySeat Evolution, which still folds up, but it's a much more solid setup. And PlaySeat are fans of what we're doing, so they hooked us up with these chairs. I got a black one, Yuri got a red one. There's a bunch of different choices. Check out the website for more. And it's cool because these are pretty much around the same price as the Challenge, and they're like way more solid, but they don't fold up as tight, but they still fold up pretty tight. And I'd just like to mention that PlaySeat makes Max Verstappen's custom F1 chair, which is pretty damn cool. Yeah, once they come out with Formula One 2020, we gotta get those full reclining F1 seats. So now let's talk about the daily racing that we've been doing with our subscribers. We've been using the N200, as the Touring Roadster for pretty much all of our races. We've been using the super soft tires because it just makes the racing so much fun. And then we also set the slipstream to strong, even though it's not realistic, it keeps the races so tight. Pretty much anyone can win any race and you can always catch up. So if you do wanna come race with us, it's super fun. I would highly recommend it. Follow us on Instagram. We post the room codes on stories. And if you're not sure about the track, follow Mr. MCA on YouTube. He did a lap guide for Dragon Trail Seaside, which is the most fun track, and it'll really help you be fast and keep up with us. And somehow he managed to pull out a 149 out of that track. My previous best was like a really high 150, so he did a really good job on that track. And then if you don't wanna play with us online on GT Sport, you can also do the daily races, which are going on all the time. And this guy always puts out lap guides, Anytime I'm doing bad in a race, I look at his lap guide and I improve my times by like two seconds. And since we are racing with some really fast drivers, shout out Sam, he's a GT3 Cup driver. We reached out to Super GT so that we could really hone our skills and see if we can get even faster. All right, so we're here with Steve from Super GT. He is going to show us how to get faster because we've been playing this for a while and you know, we kind of hit a wall. So check out his channel on YouTube, Super GT. That's kind of what got me into playing Gran Turismo when I was looking it up. I think I watched a lot of your channel before I like committed to buying it. That's very, very good to hear. You're in the right place, hopefully. I'm not the quickest, not the quickest. We, we don't mind about quickest. We just want the most YouTubist. <laughs> Best YouTuber, obviously, of course. Yeah, of yeah. Course. YouTube, <laughs> YouTube cred is gold for us. Where do we find ourselves? Laguna Seca in the Porsche 911 RSR. And I guess out of the start, um, I'm getting a 124.88 as my fastest. Jacob, what did you get? I got a 123.4. And Steve, you got a? 
I got a 120.9. <laughs> and that took you a lot less laughs because you're actually pretty good at this game. So I'm gonna slash three seconds off. I'm gonna three. get down to 121. <laughs> I yeah. want I want at least two off mine. Yeah, one twenty one okay. is the goal. Let's go, Yuri. One twenty one, and you kind of trail break in at the end, and apex again just after the sausage. And then uh, on our initial braking, so we've got the Thrustmaster T one hundred and fifty pedal yep. and steering wheel. Do I slam my foot all the way down and like keep it there, or do I like slam it down and ease off? Yeah, slam it down f to begin with, and then as you're getting towards the corner, you, you, you're going to begin to ease off. Right wheels through the through the curb here. Second gear, I'd say a proper corner for trail braking. So I'm always turning in towards the apex like this whilst on the brakes. So turning and braking at the same time. Ooh, 23.3. So 23.3. That's that's um, that's your fastest lap so far. Yeah, this is cool. I'm actually enjoying this because it's like you don't get this other than actual real driving, like with a coach right beside you. Oh, for sure, yeah, that's no, good. So over to Yuri now. So your fastest was 24.8 up to this point. Looking for that three board with the white line, breaking just before it, turning into the first corner. There it is. And keep it, keep it, keep it. That's it, that's really good. Oh, you okay, so is, is, that, is that a correct way to trail break? Yeah, so you went in, you head towards the apex. So the moment you, release the brake, the car will just begin to turn a bit better. So you just okay. got to time that dead right. So normally once you're slightly past the apex. Three... Okay, yeah. 23.8. A second so quicker one, than one you. one lap nice. was coaching and I'm already better. Good job. Uh, so, so what happened there? Did I brake too I, late there? I think that might have been dirty tires once. The problem with this track... So when oh, you got the dirty. sand... Is yeah, that a yeah, tire thing? It affects your tires, yeah, for the next sort of couple of corners your tires won't have as much grip oh okay That's so really stuff cool. like that that i never knew about yeah yeah so when you start your tra uh, races out do you like just do a whole bunch of laps i think i saw that you look at the fastest qualifying times and see what they did do you ever like go just by yourself and do it yeah if, uh, i mean the best way to really realize because uh, the problem for me sometimes is that I, I go into a session and do six seven laps I don't know if I don't know if I'm doing something stupidly wrong. So now I need to just look at the number one time and go, oh, okay, no, uh, they're doing that and they're doing this. So let's just try and do that. Sometimes I was using the complete the wrong gear or for a certain corner or something like that. And then how about like picking the fastest car? Do you always do that or do you kind of just pick whatever you want? Um, for qualifying, yeah, you always want to go with the quickest car. Usually, I I, I notice between the regions because in North America. People choose very different and varied cars. You're much better than than it, uh, than us in Europe, because everyone in Europe just goes for the quickest car. All right. So, have you noticed any more errors or anything I'm doing better, or not really? Um, I think the main thing would be like smoother power application, and then over the course of maybe half a second, you're going from no power to full power. Because I find that if you coast, so no power, no throttle, it the car kind of just wants to turn a bit better. Oh, okay. So like uh, before you give gas, like wait a like a beat and then hopefully it yeah, spins around a bit. On as okay. soon as you're on the gas, the car wants to straighten itself up. Okay. And how did you figure all this stuff out? Did you just experiment or do you kind of naturally have like a gift for detecting what the car is <laughs> doing in a game? Um, I suppose it's just from years of playing games. You just, you just work it out really. Has this uh, translated to your uh, real life lap times? Um, I'd say the main thing that is similar between real life and and the games is sort of the mental aspect just you know churning out 20 laps without making a mistake if you can do that in the game that will help you in real life yeah i noticed that when same. we were on the on the track with the hyundai veloster like the concentration from the game really helped me out yeah i i, I think that's the main thing that it really helps with just with mental things like not making mistakes um not getting too angry if someone does something, just chops across you or something, like not losing your cool, <laughs> and not oh, feeling we, too much pressure, that kind of thing. It really helps with that. Yeah, we pretty much, if somebody hits one of us, someone else will take that guy out. They don't realize <laughs> that there's like eight of us on chat. Yeah, we're ruthless. <laughs> Come on, baby. I can feel it. Yes, 22-4. 22 22 That's really good. Man, keeping my tires clean and that like letting off a brake and gas for rotation really helps. Yeah. Oh. Damn it. Ooh. The tighter you're turning and the slower you're going, the more likely you are to spin. You know how you said you want to take the curb from the, like, the start on the curb to make your turn better and faster? Yeah. 
Is there any disadvantage to riding on the curb for too long or should you only like kind of touch it when you need to? It might unsettle your car a little bit. It doesn't sort of wear out your tires or anything like that or do, or do damage to your car. But well, it, does it slow you down or? No, it doesn't slow you down. It doesn't slow you down. Because I see the RPMs jumping um, a little. So as long as you can handle it, like it's yeah, all good. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Something like Monza, sometimes there's AstroTurf and it, if you go on the AstroTurf, it slows you down. Yeah, dude, this is super hard. 28 laps in and like, I have like four that are 23 seconds. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, it's difficult. Or maybe now you could spectate me and I could uh, just talk for a lap, maybe. Just turn it in. Wow. See, there's like no panic when he's playing. He knows everything. We're still trying to panic our way through a lot of it. Pretty much. Yeah, if you're, if you're going wide, just, yeah, don't panic. Just accept that you've gone wide. You're going to lose time and just try to bring the car back by slowing it down nice and gently. So I think most of the time, if you try and fight it when you're going off, the car will win and you'll go off. So you brake, then you're off of both pedals for about half a second to really settle the car down. Okay. So I, I feel like I pretty much never did that until today. <laughs> 21 five. What, what do you find has the best community for all these games? Oh, that's a tough one. I mean, I really like the communities of both games have been great for me. You know, the guys I've met in the world, the world tour events of both games have been amazing. Forza and Gran Turismo, yeah. How about iRacing? Like, what's up? We don't understand how that works because there's like, you got to buy a computer and di buy tracks and something about yeah, a license, I, racing I think. Is, yeah, it's a, it's a lot more expensive. It's not as accessible. It's a lot more realistic, of course. Uh, you'll be immersed a lot more. Some of the best players in the world are on iRacing. It's very difficult to to get into, but it's very rewarding if you if you have success on iRacing. Yeah, I don't want to put that much effort into it. I kind of just want to play this with my friends, like a nice plug-in play. Yeah, I mean, that's why I love Gran Turismo, because um, it's not the most realistic ever of all time, but it's pretty good, and it's at the same time accessible for people. And then so, even when I wasn't playing with friends, like the matchmaking on the daily races was always like, I always felt like really good about that, and there's always races to do. Yeah, there's, yeah, I think the matchmaking's pretty decent. I know, obviously, there's going to be rammers and it, you're still going to get crashed at times, but for the most part, you're going to have a close race with someone. I can feel it too. Like, I know I'm doing something wrong. It's just oh, figuring out exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. I think that's the thing with getting better at these games. Um, you know, we've done, what, 35, 40 laps here? Um, as long as you do, you do something right once and you'd be like, Ah, I've done it. I know what to do now. I know what it is that I need to do, but it's just about doing, therefore, the amount of laps that you need to do to actually get it consistent every lap. Uh, all of our bad habits have translated to simulators. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, just, it's just hard to know. It's like, I didn't feel anything. Yeah, I never feel yeah. anything. <laughs> exactly. It's a game. <laughs> it's, if it's ingrained in the way you drive, it's, it is really hard to undo it. It really is. So that's why race car drivers are actually that much better in this game than we are. Yeah, like, I think the main a main skill of a racing driver is adaptability. They can just they can just change. They know what they're doing wrong, they just change it. I'm focusing on my pedals just being smoother now. That's it. Same lines. Yeah. And I think that's actually a, a tip I would give is um sometimes when I'm trying my absolute hardest and really ragging the car to try to get the lap time, I actually go slower. But when I just relax and just really focus on being smooth, I actually go quicker. I'll say smoothness is in this game, really rewarded. I think, you, I mean, you know how to steer. It's the yeah. pedal inputs where most of the time is won and lost. Oh, well, we kind of know how to steer. Yeah, we understand the <laughs> lines. <Kind of. laughs> You'd be surprised what you could get away with being an automotive journalist. We only do it for a job, but we haven't quite figured out the steering yet. Okay, well, I'm consistently getting like 23s now, basically. Come on, get another 22. That, that is a good sign, though. If you're, if you're lapping consistently, then that's always a good thing in itself. Because right now, you're thinking about it consciously going into the corner, that's actually difficult. Um, yeah. When maybe later, another, an, um, at another session when you're on your own and you have the freedom just to drive without, you know, me being here, it will just come more naturally. Okay, yeah, maybe it's like one of the things I just gotta like right above my TV so that I remember <laughs> to do that in races. Yeah. Well, I so know what I'm gonna do for the rest of tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see potential for sure. I, I, I definitely think you can get down into a 21, and a 21 is a decent lap time for this combination. I mean, I, I only just got into a 20, and Jacob, you're only four tenths off Yuri 
was it like a second and a bit off? Is there anything that we can um, place the blame on other than anything that we're doing? Like, can we uh, complain about our pedal setup? <laughs> maybe a little bit. All right. But <laughs> I'm pretty sure that you get the best player in the world on your setup, and he, he's still setting the, the number one times. You know. If I had to summarize a, a couple of things that you could maybe take away and improve on, it would be um, just the overall smoothness. Um, so you watch like the fastest guy their movement through the corner is so fluid the car's not dancing about at all it's just really nice and smooth yeah just better car control with the with the brakes and then the coasting through the corner on the exit of the corner just a bit a bit more gentle on the power am i still look do i still look like i'm moving around all over the track and not being yeah, smooth at definitely. all yeah definitely like even just that straight there it was a bit sort of jagged you could say the gang's all here <laughs> All right, so to end things off, thank you very much, Steve, for showing us some tips and tricks, trying to make us faster. I do My feel pleasure. faster. It's uh, going to take some practice, though, a lot of practice, and I'm going to need to copy your ghost. And what are our settings for this one? Yeah, so if you want to have a go at this, this is Group 3, Laguna Seca, with racing medium tires. And you're going to give us a clip with your foot inputs as well, right? Yes, I'll give you a clip with my pedal inputs and my steering wheel input, so you can maybe have a, have a look at that and use it as a reference for later. So thanks a lot to Steve from Super GT, who shaved a lot of seconds off of both of our lap times. We both got way more consistent, so check out Super GT, his YouTube channel. He does all this video game stuff. Yeah, lots of sim racing. It's not just GT Sport, it's iRacing as well, and a couple other things. And he does live videos and recaps of races that aren't boring at all. That was probably the best part of your whole channel, is that it's so easy to watch. I'm honored. I'm truly honored and blessed. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. It was fun. So overall, Jacob, how would you rate sim racing for the amount of money we've put into it? Honestly, I stopped playing all video games a couple years ago, but now that I'm into sim racing, this doesn't feel like a video game. This feels like driving, so I love it. But I'm actually kind of excited to get like back on a racetrack for real now. I want to use all my concentration and skills and translate that back to real cars. And if you're a professional race car driver or an amateur race car driver or a Formula One driver, give us a call. We want to come play with you. So big thanks to Mr. MCA and Super GT for all your help. We're having a great time with the sim racing. Remember, follow us on Instagram if you want to race with us. And let us know in the comments what you want us to know about sim racing. What are we missing out on? 